Welcome to Programming in Python. Today we are going to learn about branching. Now branching is also called flow of control. Well, it's part of flow of control. And that is the order at which your computer performs tasks or these statements, the, the lines of code. Up until now, we've written code where it's, the computer just goes line by line by line by line, executing or interpreting those lines of code. The in Python interpreter interprets those lines of code. But now, you know, what if we only want to run certain code if some conditions are met? And you could think of that as like a username and password. If we ask, if a program asks for username and password, we only want to give access, right? We only want to run certain code if the username, you know, matches a password, right? That that's we've saved. So we only want to proceed if both of them are correct. So we need to change the flow of control. And the first thing we're gonna learn for flow of control is branching. And branching lets us choose between multiple options. And really, this, this is a fundamental part of computer programming, no matter what language you're, you're using. So what we're gonna do for branching is these, these are conditional statements. We're gonna execute certain code if conditions are met, if a condition is true. So you can think of it almost like you know, when you go down a path, right, and you have to make a decision of one way or another. Um, it's like, hey, if it's raining, I want to bring an umbrella. If it's hot, I'm going to wear shorts. If it's not, I'm going to wear pants. Something like that, right? We're going to make a decision. And so in Python, we're going to use this, this structure, this if, if else, and if, elif, else. All right, so let's start with the if. So if is a reserved word in Python, and it allows us to determine whether some code you know, we're going to execute some code based on a condition. And we do it based on if that condition is true. So it's almost like asking a yes or no question, right? We could say, hey, if a user's age is 18 or older, then you can vote, right? So we put some condition and the computer is going to evaluate it to true or false, which if you remember is a, is a type, right? It's a bool. So if the expression evaluates your true or false, we call that a Boolean expression. And operators that evaluate your true or false are called Boolean operators. So let's look at the syntax for it. So we say if condition, so this is the pseudocode, right? If condition colon statement. And we can actually put lots of statements in there. And here's another one, if condition statement else statement. Now, hopefully you're seeing this indentation. So in Python, indentation matters. Actually, indentation determines what code gets executed. So what we're saying here is if a certain condition is true, we're going to execute those lines that are indented underneath the if. Okay? So we place this colon after the condition. That's a requirement of the language. And then we have to indent the lines underneath the if statement. The else is optional, so we can have an if without an else, and it says if this condition is true, we're going to do these statements, or we can use an if else, and that means if this condition is true, do statement one. If it's false, right, so that first condition eva e evaluated to false, then we do statement two. Yeah. So let's see some actual code examples. So here's an example where we're going to get the age from the user, Right, we're going to say input, enter your age. Now, it input, the input function always returns a string. So we need to convert it to an int. And then we're going to check that value. And we're going to say if age is greater than or equal to 18, we're going to print you can vote. Else, we're going to print not yet. And that indentation matters. So in whatever IDE you're using, like PyCharm or Repl.it, you either you either do a, a consistent spacing or a tab. I like to use just a tab, like I always just use tabs. So in this case, we say, hey, enter your age. And if we use 18, right, now this age variable will have the value of 18, and 18 equals 18. So it comes in and says, oh, that's true. That statement is true. So it will say, it will print, you can vote. And then it's done. And then it jumps, it ig ignores the else. Whereas, and if we enter something like 17, well, 17 is less than 18, so it skips the 
print you can vote, it goes to the else because that condition is false and it prints not yet. Big thing to remember in Python, indentation matters. You have to indent and that's what determines what lines, what statements, what code is gonna be executed. So with these conditions, you notice that we can use these comparisons, right? And so when we have numbers, we can use comparison, we can use these, you know, greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to. Now, when it comes to the greater than or equal to, there's no space in between those two characters. You have to put them next to each other. Now, another thing that's interesting is the equals. Now, notice here, to, to check to see if something is equal, we have to use double equals, two, two equal signs right next to each other. And the reason we have to do that is because a single equals means assignment. We're assigning a value. We don't want to assign a value. We want to test a value. And so we have to use this double equals. Okay, so that's that top one, double equals. And then we also, it's really nice to see if something isn't equal to something. So we use that exclamation mark, which means not. So it's like not equal. And again, that, that exclamation mark and the equal sign needs to be right next to each other, no space in between there. Okay, so here are some examples where you could say, hey, is three greater than 10? No, that's false, right? So the value is false. Is five less than eight? Yes, that's true. So you can see that this, these conditions are always gonna to equate to a Boolean of true or false. Now, these are examples using numbers. We can use strings as well. So we can actually compare two strings together and use that double equals uh, to compare to see if two strings are equal, or we can use that not equals as well for strings. Okay, so let's write a program that asks the user how many pets they have. And if it's less than or equal to two, tell them to adopt a pet, regardless of the value, print out a thank you message. So here is what the output will look like. How many pets do you have? One, please adopt a pet. And then no matter what, it says, thank you for using my program. So this is what the code will look like. We're gonna say, we're gonna have to get from the user, how many pets do you have? We're gonna use the input function, pass it in that, that prompt. We're gonna then convert it to an int because input always gives us a string. We convert it to an int and now that value is in pets. And so then we say if, if is that reserved word, the variable pets is less than two colon. We say, please adopt more. And then, and that, and we have to indent. And no matter what, and notice how the print, thank you for using my program, is, is all the way to that left side again. That means it's out, outside of the if. So if we say, how many pets do you have? One, we goes in there, it will print, please adopt more, thank you for using my program. But if I run it, and how many pets do I have? Three, then it will skip that if, and just write, thank you for using my program. Now there's a lot of times we wanna do multiple conditions. We wanna see you know, if different things will happen based on different conditions, right? So if a score is you know, between some certain range, right? So we're gonna use uh, an if structure, but we're adding to it. So in the middle of it, notice we're adding this elif, E-L-I-F. So we're gonna use, the, here's the pseudocode or syntax is the reserved word if, a condition, colon, and then we can put as many statements as you want in that if, then an elif, so that's, a, that's another reserved word, E-L-I-F, another condition, colon, statements, and then if you want to, at the last, you can put an else, and that means none of those other statements are true, then it will do the else, okay? So we always think of that as kind of like a default. If none of them are true, then we go in there. Okay, and here is an example of doing this multiple. Um, and so you can say here, we're gonna say if the score, so we have them input a score, if it's greater than or equal to 90, then that the grade is an A. If it's, and if that's false, then we know it's less than 90. So then we go down to the next one where we say the score is greater than or equal to 80. We already know it's less than 90 because if it's failed the first condition, it's gonna test the second. Now, if that one fails, it's gonna go down to the next one. If that one fails, it goes to the next one, right? So if we put in, for example, a value like 85, 
we look through there and it says, if the score is greater than or equal to 90, that's false. So we know to go down to the next one. L if score is greater than or equal to 80, oh, it is. So now we know the grade equals D. So then we jump out, then we ignore the rest of the else's because it was true. We go down to the very end and then we get our print, okay? So that's how this multiple elif works. Notice that if you use if or elif, you always have to have a condition after it. If you use else, you never have a condition because that's like the alternative, okay? Everything else is uh, false and so that's the else. Now there's a lot of times we want actually, we want to choose between multiple options and we want maybe multiple conditions to be true. So this is called Boolean logic because we want to, you know, have one thing maybe true and then maybe not, both of these things maybe need to be true or both of them, only one needs to be true, but we want to check different conditions. Okay, so we are going to use this Boolean logic and we use the reserved words and, or, and not, and, or, and not. Um, and so if you say, hey, is something an apple and it's green, right? A dog or a canine, right? You want, you, you're, you're testing two things and you're like, is it a dog or a canine? Then I want to do something. Um, and we could also use the not where we say, hey, I want something that is football, but not soccer. Okay. So this is these, we're going to equate these Boolean expressions and we're going to use these reserved words and, or, and not. And, 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 or, that means that both conditions have to be true for it to be true. The or means either of the conditions need to be true, to, to be true. And the not means you only compare the not against one term. So you say, hey, is it not a puppy, right? Something, or not, I should say, you know, puppy, but not a kitten, right? So not is used on one Boolean expression where and and or combine two Boolean expressions. Okay, so let's see it in action. Here's the pseudocode. We have one expression and another expression. So here we have an example where we have the user enter in a number and they, we make sure that the number is greater than or equal to zero and the number is less than, less than 10. So we know that we're expecting a number. We wanna make sure that the user enters a number between zero and nine, okay? So if they enter a 15, we say, oh, you didn't enter a correct number, okay? But if they entered eight, that is between zero and, you know, greater than or equal to zero and it's less than 10, so you entered, you know, then we can print the message that you entered a single digit positive number. So that's the and. The or is only one has to be true, okay? So if one of them is true, then the whole expression is true. So we have them enter in a number and say we wanna to check to see if the number equals eight or the number equals 24. Now notice how I have to put number equal, you know, two equal signs eight, and then again, test against number, right? You have to put num twice the variable twice, because it needs to, that one expression has to equate to true or false. Then the other expression has to equate true or false. And then we have that or, or and in between. So we say if the number is eight or the number is 24, then you entered Kobe Jackson's, uh, Kobe's jer jersey number. So if I enter 15, nothing happens. But if I enter an eight, then it says you entered Kobe's jersey number because he had two jersey numbers. What if both expressions are true? Say we do this, we do this condition where I have them enter two different numbers. And I say, does number one, I, they enter a variable for one number and they enter another number. So I'm te testing both variables. And if either of them, right, they could have entered in eight and eight, it's still gonna be true, right? If they're both true, it's true. Now the not just requires one Boolean expression. So here we say, it must, you know, we are basically changing it. If that expression was true, the not makes it false. If the expression was false, the not makes it true. So here we have enter number, and if not number greater than zero, <laughs> which seems silly, but yes, not number greater than zero, greater than or equal to zero, then we enter a number, nothing happens. But if it is not greater than or equal to zero, that must mean it's a negative number. So there you go. 
So it just changes everything and makes it up in it. This is what we'll call the truth, uh, true and false tables. So if we have, you know, an and, if we use and, if we have two trues, two equations, two expressions that are true, it's true. If we have a true and a false, it's false. If we have a true and a, a false and a true, it's false. And if we have a false and a false, it's false. And the or table is if you have a true or a true, it's true. True or false is true. False or true is true. And false or false is false. And then the not right just converts it. So if an expression is true, a not will make it false. And if expression is false, a not will make it true. So that's branching and Boolean logic.